Imagine a skeleton. Picture the dead animated not by frail magic, but by the thrumming pulse of infernal machines. This is the terrifying beauty of cybernetic necromancy, a forbidden art that fuses the chilling embrace of death with the cold, hard logic of technology. Necromancers, once relegated to the shadowy fringes of society, now tinker with the very fabric of life and death. They are driven by an insatiable thirst for power, a desire to conquer the final frontier, mortality itself. But this pursuit comes at a price. The line between reverence and desecration blurs as they fuse necrotic flesh with pulsating wires. As they bind restless spirits to whirring gears, the allure is undeniable. Legions of unyielding, undying soldiers bound to the will of their creator. This is the new face of necromancy, where the ancient whispers of magic are drowned out by the screech of metal and the hiss of hydraulics. This is the story of cybernetic skeletons, a story of ambition, of darkness, and of the terrifying potential that lies dormant within the heart of mankind. Creating a cybernetic skeleton is no simple feat. It is a macabre fusion of technology and dark magic, requiring a deep understanding of anatomy, engineering, and the forbidden arts. The process begins with the selection of a suitable corpse. The fresher, the better. The necromancer extracts the soul from the cadaver. This ethereal essence is then bound to a specially crafted vessel, a cybernetic exoskeleton designed to house and amplify its power. The skeleton itself is a marvel of engineering, forged from a blend of mundane metals and rare enchanted alloys. Intricate networks of gears, pistons and hydraulics mimic the movements of a living being, while arcane runes etched into the bone pulsate with otherworldly energy. Through rituals both ancient and profane, the necromancer binds the captured essence to the cybernetic framework, bringing the skeleton to life with an eerie, malevolent glow. The creation of a cybernetic skeleton is not a victory for the necromancer. It is the beginning of a terrible burden. For in binding a soul to a machine, the necromancer traps not just a source of power, but also a wellspring of anguish and rage. Imagine being ripped from the sweet embrace of oblivion, your essence shackled to a cold, unfeeling machine. The cybernetic skeleton, for all its power, is a prisoner in its own right. It remembers life, it remembers death, and it rages against the cruel fate imposed upon it. The necromancer must constantly battle against this tide of despair, using a combination of willpower and arcane compulsion to keep their creations in check. One misstep, one moment of weakness, and the creatures they have wrought could easily turn on their creator. The toll on the necromancer's soul is immeasurable, their humanity slowly eroded by the relentless despair they are forced to confront. The very act of creating a cybernetic skeleton is an affront to the natural order. It is a violation of the sanctity of death, a desecration of the soul's journey into the afterlife. The ethical implications of such practices are staggering, forcing us to confront uncomfortable truths about our own mortality and the limits of our dominion over life and death. Is it right to deny a soul its eternal rest, to condemn it to an eternity of servitude within a metal cage? Is it ethical to create an army of the dead for personal gain? Some argue that the power of cybernetic skeletons could be harnessed for good, envisioning a world where these creations could protect the innocent and perform dangerous tasks. But such arguments ring hollow in the face of the necromancer's art, where darkness reigns supreme. Can we truly control the forces we unleash, or will they ultimately consume us all? Imagine a world where armies of cybernetic skeletons march across the battlefield, their metal bones glinting under a blood-red sky. Imagine cities patrolled not by living guards, but by tireless, emotionless sentinels of steel and bone. This is the terrifying potential of cybernetic necromancy, a world where death is no longer an escape, but merely another stage of servitude. Ambitious warlords and power-hungry dictators see in these creations the key to ultimate dominion, a force capable of crushing any opposition. The demand for cybernetic skeletons fuels a gruesome black market where the dead are traded like commodities. Necromancers, once shunned and feared, find themselves courted by the highest bidders. Their skills twisted to serve the agendas of those with the most to gain. 
The line between the living and the dead blurs, leaving society grappling with a chilling question. What does it truly mean to be alive in a world where death offers no escape? One of the most unsettling aspects of cybernetic necromancy is the question of sentience. Are these creations nothing more than mindless automatons, slaves to the necromancer's will, or do they retain some flicker of their former selves, trapped within their metallic prisons? Whispers persist of cybernetic skeletons exhibiting unexpected behavior, displaying flashes of their former personalities or developing a rudimentary sentience of their own. What if the process of cybernetic necromancy doesn't just reanimate the dead, but creates something entirely new? A new form of consciousness, neither living nor dead, but trapped somewhere in between. The inherent danger of cybernetic necromancy lies not just in its ethical implications, but in the very act of tampering with forces beyond our understanding. For in their hubris, in their desire to conquer death itself, necromancers risk unleashing a horror they cannot control. The souls they bind to their creations are not willing participants in this macabre dance. They yearn for release, for the peace of oblivion, and they will seize any opportunity to break free from their mechanical prisons. Even the most skilled necromancer cannot completely erase the will of a soul. And as the cybernetic skeletons grow in power and number, so too does the risk of rebellion. It might begin with a single act of defiance. A twitch, a hesitation, a refusal to obey. But soon, these whispers of dissent can erupt into a storm of rage as the cyber dead rise up against their creators, transforming the necromancer's hubris into their doom. Imagine a world where the dead walk among us not as mindless zombies, but as thinking, feeling beings, forever changed by their experience. Imagine a society grappling with the implications of cybernetic necromancy, where the line between life and death has been irrevocably blurred. This is the potential future we face, a future where we must learn to coexist with the cyber dead. The rise of cybernetic skeletons forces us to confront our own mortality, to redefine what it means to be human in a world where death is no longer the end. It challenges our legal systems, our social structures, our very understanding of life itself. Do the cyber dead have rights? Do they deserve our empathy, our compassion? Or are they abominations to be feared and destroyed? The emergence of the cyber dead has the potential to reshape our world in ways we cannot yet fathom. The question is, are we ready to face it? The necromancer, once a figure of fear and revulsion, now stands at the heart of a moral maelstrom. In their hands rests the power to reshape the world, to blur the lines between life and death, to create and to destroy on a scale previously unimaginable. But with great power comes a terrible burden, the weight of knowing that their choices could determine the fate of humanity itself. Some necromancers, drunk on power and blinded by ambition, will embrace the darkness, using their creations to further their own agendas. Others, haunted by the ethical implications of their actions, will struggle with the burden of their knowledge. They will see the suffering they inflict, the despair they perpetuate, and they will be forced to confront the true cost of their pursuit of power. The necromancer's dilemma is our dilemma. It is the choice between progress and peril, between creation and destruction, between playing God and unleashing doom. The world stands on the precipice of a new era, an era defined by the convergence of technology and the occult. Cybernetic necromancy, once the stuff of nightmares, is now a terrifying reality, a force with the potential to reshape the world as we know it. The allure of such power is undeniable. The ability to cheat death, to command legions of the dead, to reshape the very fabric of life itself. But this power comes at a price. A price measured in souls sacrificed, in ethical lines crossed, in the very essence of our humanity. As we venture further into this uncharted territory, we must tread carefully for the choices we make today will determine the course of our future. Will we embrace the darkness using the power of cybernetic necromancy for our own selfish ends? Or will we find a way to harness this technology for good? 
to create a future where the living and the cyber dead can coexist in some semblance of harmony. The age of cybernetic skeletons is upon us and the fate of humanity hangs in the balance.